The Gathering 2019 with Wes Adams of Wes Adam Knives. How are you doing, sir? Very good. Thank you very much, Stu. Come nope. Come on, saying hello. Well, and we've been talking for a little bit, and we talked last year for a little while, too. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, you had nothing on the table. I think some parts, and that was about it. It's a pretty popular design. Yeah, so I'll tell you what. Panning down here, this is your folders. This is the, uh, this is the flipper. It's all carbon fiber. Now, before we get into the specific knives, tell me a little bit of your background. What got you into knife making? How long ago? You know, a little started, bit about you. I started knives in about 1992, and the emphasis was really because I was in law enforcement, and uh, the vast majority of that was uh, more of a... People knew I made knives, and uh, they wanted some type of uh, a true everyday carry tactical type knife. So over the years, we refined it, refined it to the product that we have now. So about approximately what year was that that you got started? Around 1992. And at what point were you actually making knives for you know for sale instead of just making necessarily for a colleague? Probably about. Uh, well, I became a, a, a guild member of the Knife Makers Guild in 1996. Okay. So as far as uh, any type of new business, uh, that's really I would say when I actually started marketing knives. Now, have you always been in Florida? Uh, most of my life, yeah. Okay, most very of my good. Life. I uh, started with uh, Miami-Dade County Sheriff's Department in uh, 1979 and uh, spent uh, 30 or so years uh, with them. Yeah. And recently retired. There's no such thing as retirement, Les. Well, that's true. The old uh, adage is you, you, you retire, you die. Yeah, that's it. I'm yeah. probably busier now than I've ever been. Well, there you go. Keeps you going. So did you start off with a folder design when you first started making knives? The first design that was really tactical was this one here. I spent the last 15 years uh, of my career on the bomb squad. Um, so most of these knives were designed out of necessity for the work that we uh, that we needed and the tools that we needed. In other words, uh, non-magnetic signature. Uh, uh, well, all spark. steel is, is is magnetic to a certain extent, but uh, more along the lines of lightness and strength. Okay. That's where we ended up with the carbon fiber. Okay. When did you start getting into carbon fiber as your? Uh, as your scales? Uh, probably about 10 years ago. Okay, because the photograph that you show there, that your initial knife, looks uh, it looks like the blade dynamic or the blade design is very similar. The, the blade design and everything, uh, uh, the handle is a little different, but the blade design was uh, pretty much tried and true. Uh, it's a double grind, strength and lightness. Okay, so uh, what, what are you producing now? Uh, about all I really have time for because of the demand of the two styles, the flipper and the automatic. And other than the action itself, they, they look virtually identical. Yeah, they're pretty much the same. The handle shape is the same and the blade is the same. The cutout on the course on the flipper is the only difference. Now, are you? Uh, what is your demand and in, in, in typical production per uh, you know per year or time frame? They're uh, pretty much sold the minute they uh, come out of uh, uh, that they're finished uh, being made. About how many are you making per year? Uh, I probably do. Let's see. Uh, I'd say about a, around about a hundred, uh, hundred knives a year. About one hundred a year. About hundred. On average. On average. Now your mechanism on the automatic. I'll let you do that since I'm okay. kind of winging it here with one hand. One of the biggest problems we have with automatics is they go off in your pocket. Uh, if, if there's no safety design into it, it's really kind of could be a dangerous knife. Uh, my, myself and my guys need a knife that's a one-handed knife, but we don't need it to accidentally go off when we're downrange or something, okay? So I came up with this design. Basically, what it amounts to is you cannot close this knife accidentally by pushing the button. You can't open it accidentally by pushing the button. There's a spring-loaded safety. I guess you could compare that if you're a gun enthusiast to a cross bolt safety on a shotgun, typical shotgun safety. What happens is you push the safety back, 
then you push the button at the same time. When you release everything, the safety reactivates into a safe mode so that you can't accidentally close the knife on it. To close it, same way, push it back, push the button, close the knife. What's the material on your safety button? Is that also carbon fiber or is that the, a... the safety is actually a composite material, the same material they make folding balls out of. So I believe it's an ebonite. And um, that, that particular, that particular uh, item is, uh, I have a mold and I cast that myself. Uh, the other feature... So you're not grinding that down from no, stock, it's actually molded. Correct, correct. Other features on the knife, You'll see that the uh, clip is embedded in the frame instead of just stuck on to keep it from catching with anything. Also, the majority of knives that you'll see have a clip on it that the clip actually curls up. We found out a long time ago that that's just a good way to catch the knife on something and lose it. So now we put it so the point that it's uh, uh, flush. And that's also on your flipper. That's also on the flipper. And you've even got the uh, the base of the clip drops down just a little bit. It's it's uh, oh yeah, it's embedded. Not only the... is it not sticking up above where it could get caught, yeah. but it's actually embedded down down yeah, below uh, the surface of your uh, handle material. It's, uh, it goes right into the handle itself. What is your price point on these knives? These knives sell for uh, uh, retail at between three fifty and three seventy five. Everything on these knives, both models, is completely done in shop. Nothing is sent out at all. It's sole proprietorship of myself. I don't have any uh, apprentices or help. Everything on that knife is, uh, is completely done in shop, including the heat treat and uh, fry row freezing. All blades are fry row. Now it looks like you're trying to make a beer in that one. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We also put them, or I also put them through two temper cycles. Two temper cycles? Yeah. Very good. They come out to about a 60 on the Rockwell. The steel material is uh, CMP 154. Very good. And internals? Uh, same? Uh, all stainless steel in, in, in internals. Very good. Every part of this knife that moves, moves against the steel surface. The bolt and everything, all parts move and, and rub against steel, not against carbon fiber. Everything that's screwed into it gets screwed into steel and not into the carbon fiber. It gives you this the ultimate strength factor. Very good. I also, on the automatics, one of the biggest problems automatics too also have is not opening as fast and as secure as they should. I use a spring that's twice the strength of any other spring on the market as far as I can tell. So when you open that, it will open no matter what. Even, even at the very, very last part, the weakest part of the spring, it'll still snap shut and lock into place. So it's not losing its uh, force. The torque on the spring is, is very high all the way through it. Interesting. Any other specific points about your knives? Uh, all the screws are stainless steel. Uh, they're serial numbered because of uh, two government contracts that I have, so they need to be serial numbered for accountability. But uh, that's about it. Yeah. Very good. Les, absolute pleasure meeting you Steve, again, brother. Nice to see you. You take good care and have a safe trip home. Safe travels to you, too. Thank you, brother. Good.